Hey everyone, it's Howie Schwartz, excited to have you here. This is the next installation in the Offer Vault free affiliate training series. If you missed any of our previous sessions live, or if you're attending live and want to watch a replay, which we hope you do, then please log into your Offer Vault account, click on free training, and you're going to see all of the, the great content that we've been preparing for you. So we do encourage you to watch it if you have not. And if you are attending live, it's great to have you here. If you're watching the replay, we do encourage you to join live. Uh, we host these sessions Tuesday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. The advantages of attending live is you can ask questions for us live that we answer, we can look at your specific niche markets and your offers that you're interested in, in running, and we can provide direct feedback. So replays are great, of course, if you're watching those, but we really do encourage you to participate live as much as you can. So great. So let's take a look and start where we always do, which is the action plan. So our action plan is to make sure that each and every week you sign up for 10 brand new affiliate networks and you want to use the offer vault links. So as you're kind of searching through offers, you can click on any of the network links and start to join here. And again, you want to always sign up through your offer vault link because we have relationships with the networks. You of course can search offers as we've shown in the past. You can click the network tab and go through and apply for any of these networks. And, and we recommend that you're going to apply for at least 10 networks per week. And if you're just starting out in the replay section, you're going to see a great video back uh, from the middle of August, which talks about how to apply to affiliate networks. And then there's a second video with our top secrets to get accepted by affiliate networks. So I do encourage you, if you have not um, already to watch those. And uh, the more networks that you, you apply to, the more you're diversifying uh, your offers and just uh, the more uh, revenue opportunities that you'll have. And you know all of the six, seven, eight figure affiliates that you know, Mark Roth and I hang out with on a regular basis always are looking to participate in new affiliate networks. And also, they're always looking to diversify the types of offers that they're running and looking to add new offers and new affiliate networks to their stable on a really regular basis. It's just, in our experience, it's just the best way to scale and also diversify where you don't put all of your eggs in one basket on one offer or just one, um, <clears throat> one network. So uh, again, uh, great to have you here live. I always encourage uh, live attendance where you can and anyone here live tonight if you'd like me to look at a specific niche market for you you could type it in I'd be happy to get into it and uh, if there's a niche or an offer that you'd like me to take a look at I will go through it um, let me just read some of the ones that are coming in all right so we have one for debt consolidation so let's go into trustee offer vault Let's type in debt. So you're going to see these lead offers with high payouts. So someone just typed in, you know, so why do these have such a high payout, right? So this could, you know, require more information or a multi-step form. A form like this might require a social security number from the user, from your prospects, right? For them to get, you know, pre-approved for a loan like that. So that's when you see high payouts. Those are the typical reasons. This one's really interesting, small business loans. We're going to want to take a look at this in, in a little bit. So I, I want to talk about some of the different financial offers that we can see and find on OfferVault. Uh, these are payday loans, which are different than debt consolidation, right? Trial and cash, these are more payday loans. We see some paper call offers, interesting. So IRS debt, 10K plus, let's take a look at this. Credit repair. So again, these are related offers. So your credit repair is a little different than debt consolidation. <clears throat> we can look at debt relief here. 
All right, that should be a good number of offers for us to look at. So let's just take a look at the types of offers that are currently on on Offer Vault for this market. And then tonight's topic is going to be about content marketing. This is part two in content marketing and really starting to thinking about organic search and, and, S, and SEO, search engine optimization. So the goal here is to start to build free organic traffic from the search engines for us to then monetize with our affiliate offers. So you know the best traffic is always free for a few reasons. The obvious reason is, of course, that you know you're not paying for it, so you're able to really you know increase um, your your margin and, and and your return you know a lot higher than you than you can with you know sort of a paid traffic source. But another key point is that the leads and the traffic from content marketing and SEO, especially when it's search driven from Google tends to be very intent heavy. So what I mean by that is if someone's searching in, you know, debt consolidation or, or something like that within Google and they're finding an article that you wrote or a press release, we're going to go through some of the content marketing steps this evening. Guess what? That, that user, that prospect is already expressed very heavily their intent and their goal on exactly what they're trying to to accomplish with that search, right? So that's why I love organic traffic and I love kind of search-driven traffic for content marketing is it's not just a matter of the fact that it's free, it's also that it tends to convert the best out of all of your traffic sources just because, again, it is very directed and it's exactly what your prospect is looking for and you're trying to solve their problem and that's how we move our prospects or consumers down the funnel that's how we get them on our list that's how we convert them into affiliate offers is when you're able to answer their questions and solve their problems and i love to start with search driven uh, organic traffic and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight in part two of content marketing. So again, I'm looking at the, the first niche that was typed in tonight related to debt consolidation. We'll look at some other content marketing and some other offers around it. But if you have a niche that you're interested in or a specific offer, please do type it in. And uh, I would love to, to review it with you this evening also. Okay, so let's uh, continue here. So this is interesting, small business loans. So why did I bring this up? <clears throat> is this is a, a very different type of offer than a debt consolidation offer or credit repair or a payday loan. They're all quite different in their in their own right. But this is for small businesses versus the other offers that we talked about before are for consumers or individuals. So it's really important that we start to think about that as we're building you know, are, you know, as we're building, you know, traffic, as we're, you know, starting to plan out our offers and some of the niche research and competitive intelligence that we've reviewed in other previous webinars. And again, the replays are available on your free training tab is we've talked about how do we drill into the long tail and how do we find a niche or how do we find keywords to focus on that are not as competitive, that are not just getting chased at by everyone else in, in, in your specific market. So this to me is interesting because it's still finance related, but if you can start to sp speak to small business owners, this is a very, very different, you know, approach than, um, than working with, you know, consumers. So I would consider that you do think about the small business market, because then you can start to think about, um, you know, credit card or merchant processing. Let's see. Um, so there has been merchant processing offers in the past on Offer Vault. Let's see what is available today. So it's merchant cash advance. So that's you know more of like a factoring. Let's see merchant processing. Hold on. Let's see if there's any merchant processing offers offers here. Let's take a look. So nothing in merchant processing. Let's see, I saw something interesting pop here. Merchant cash advance. There we go. This is another 
deposits in, in one year and business are interesting. So this is a paper call for merchants. So this is basically, you can think about factoring or, 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 um, you know, sort of like, uh, advances on, on credit card, uh, purchases for a small business. So you can start to think about this is as another way to monetize small business traffic. In addition to small business loans, we saw another one that looked interesting too. It's an American Express. Let's see what that says. American Express Merchant Processing. One in two years. Seven ever. So no origination. Fam just looking to see what here on a successful loan. Products are available to Amex customers. Amex, but interesting. So we'd have to see if this is a uh, merchant financing expert on the line. Yeah, so merchant financing. Yes, this is also for small businesses. So this to me is a really interesting vertical to think about. So I love finance. You're very easily able to solve someone's problem that they have. I love um, offers that have paper call involved and we, and we have done a paper call um, webinar in the past. I love offers that have, again, diversification, kind of multiple offers that are a little bit, you know, kind of unique or, or something that's just, you're know, not as, as broad. So when we start to think about, um, you know, how competitive, let's compare like, you know, debt consolidation, right? So let's compare debt consolidation with 63.3 million. Let's compare it to small business loan. 480 million, actually interesting. So even more pages here. That's actually quite interesting. I was expecting it to be the opposite. Let's uh, put this in quotes. That's why it's very important that we kind of go through these steps here. So 8.5 million, interesting. Putting an exact match just gives us a feel of more of the exact, um, yeah, 11 million. So debt consolidation has, has more pages and exact match than, than small business loans. But I'm very interested in, in that how much, how many pages, how much content was also available in small business loans. Very interesting because again, we like to, it's like what I, it's what I like to call a rich niche and a rich niche means something that we can very easily monetize, right? A lot of offers, a lot of networks involved in it. And that's a big part of always what we're, what we're thinking about when we're looking um, across offers on, um, on OfferVault. So let's, let's continue here and let, let's dig in. Let's, let's dig into small business loans. And let's start to think about and talk about content marketing. First, let me see what other questions we have. So again, please continue typing in your offers. And I'd be happy to... Um, Look specifically at your niche markets or your offers directly also. All right, great. Keep typing them in. I think everyone's with me so far. Let's take a look here at the type of content that's been being developed. So um, government ones, government back on startup ones, small business loan rates, bad credit, small business loans. You know, let's, let's dig into that. So again, we've talked about this before in our niche research and our competitive research, men of intelligence here. How do we start to get into the long tail, right? So let, let's continue to to dig in here. So small business, bad credit loans in 48 hours. SBA quarter. So again, I'm, I'm like starting to, to take notes here. And the way that I take notes, and we've mentioned this in pretty much every webinar that we've done, is the importance of using you know, Google Docs or Google Sheets or some sort of an online um, you know, collaborative tool. Cause what, what that allows you to do is one collaborate if you're working with any partners or outsources, and we're going to be talking about, you know, how to scale your affiliate business with outsources in, in the near future. But even for yourself, you know, I live on Google docs or Google sheets. I'd say whatever you're more comfortable with, just one of the two, just so that way, if I'm at work or on the train or, or, you know, in bed at night, you know, and I could always, you know, continue making notes and tracking everything. That's really the most, I think one of the key secrets to successful affiliates, not only are they testing new offers on a really very regular basis with the new networks, is they're also very, very focused on, on tracking and understanding what's working, what's not understanding what their competitors are doing. So that to me is also very important is you want to make sure that, um, that you're writing all this down. So now you know, I've written down small business, 
loans to start. Now I'm writing down, you know, bad credit small business loans. And I'm starting to make some notes here about, you know, the advertisers who are running here, whether it's the advertiser's name or the headlines or the type of copy that they're doing. How do I get a small business loan with bad credit? So here is a great resource within Google. I love people also ask. We've also talked in the past on our competitive intelligence, how we use Google Suggest, right? Google Autocomplete to come up with other keyword ideas. So I'm writing this down related to the geography. So it could be in different countries, different states, different cities, things like that. So I'm writing that down. We also use you know, Google um, search with you know search terms related to. So I'm pasting this all in to my Google Sheet. I'm also going to make a note here of minority business loans, right? And then minority business loans, bad credit. So we can think of like for small business loans or business loans, we can think about like bad credit is what I like to call a keyword modifier. Minority could be another keyword modifier. Female owned, veteran owned. Again, this is a niche I'm very familiar with. So um, I've seen some, you know, some sort of really good results in being able to develop contents and build free traffic um, as we start to go again deeper into the into the long tail. So if we start to go here, let's let's first look here just so people also ask, and then we'll start to look at you know kind of you know drilling into you know women owned small businesses, veteran owned small businesses, minority owned small businesses, things like that. And you're gonna see a lot of opportunities um, you know to work with here uh, directly. So how do I get a small business loan here? Small business trends. So I'm looking at some of the content that's being developed here. Small business trends. You know, so we're seeing review sites. It's interesting. So I'm going to write top five or the 10 best business loans. So I'm starting to write that down as far as content ideas. Let's see here. I'm trying to see what other sort of content we can start thinking about. So small business trends. This was published recently in June. So having trouble getting a small business loan, individuals, uh, credit history, getting a small business loan is possible because they focus on more than your credit history to make a decision. Getting a small business loan. So again, I'm starting to look here at what type of content is being developed. So what's interesting here is these are most likely you know, affiliate links that they're running. Again, I'm just making an assumption on that. And they're focusing on you know, so where to get a small business loan, loan or the top five places, right? So this to me is kind of really interesting to start to think about what these, um, you know, what types of content is, is working. So right here, I've seen a few examples of review sites that works really great for content marketing where you could just write you know, a simple review and this is not long form reviews so we're going to talk about some of the difference between long form and short form content tonight so what you could do here is you could do like a, a top five or, or a comparison so here you know they're they're contrasting and comparing multiple companies that can be affiliate offers or that they could have relationships with, right, to monetize the traffic. And what's interesting here is it's short form. So they're able to go and do a little research from each one of these companies and just write a paragraph or two. And by combining you know, one or two paragraphs for each of these four or five companies, all of a sudden you're at an article that's what I like to call sort of this thick content. We're going to get into that in, in a moment to really get Google, to really get and keep Google's attention, right? So what do I mean by thick content? So let's start with thin affiliate content. So if you're just, you know, lifting, you know, whatever copies from, um, you know, uh, whatever copy might be provided from the affiliate offer or just, you know, writing a few paragraphs or, you know, duplicate content, you're taking it from somewhere else online and, and you're not, you know, having it uh, written for you. And we'll talk about outsourcing again on a future webinar. Or if you're not writing it yourself, then guess what? You're not going to really get much benefit or credit for it because Google is then going to label it 
as thin affiliate content. So it only exists for the purpose of trying to, to monetize you know, an, an audience. And that can be very well the purpose of your content. That's always the 100% purpose of my content. But I thicken it up and I try to add some value to the user. And that shows some value to Google and the search engines, right? Where we start to to build more of this authority relationship, so you know this is a great way to start you know developing content where you find a few offers or a few different programs, and you write you know one or two paragraphs as a review of each one. You put that together in one sort of mid to long form article, and all of a sudden you know you're starting to show you know Google and the search engines that you know that you mean business, right? That you're developing some original content. So that's really you know sort of my my first tip and first important point on content marketing is to really make sure that you're not developing thin content, that you're not just kind of throwing out you know um you know any sort of um any sort of you know th- uh any sort of duplicate content that you're lifting from other places. It's just not going to to work at all. It's just really important to, to make sure that um, you do pay, you do pay attention um, that you do pay attention uh, that you're building content of value, right? You want to show value to your prospects, so they're returning to your content, they're returning to your site, they're subscribing to your newsletter. We did a whole webinar on list building and the importance of owning your prospects and building a list, right? So it's so important for your content development strategy that you pick a niche where either one, you have experience in that you can write very freely about, right? Or number two, um, you're able to outsource that we're going to talk about in the future and hire someone to, to write. Or number three, it's something that it's very easy for you to do research on, be able to assemble content that's unique enough to be considered, you know, um, uh, of value by Google and of, of your cons- of your prospects and consumers, right? So really important steps when we're thinking about content uh, development and content marketing. So a lot of things have changed over the years. Like I've been doing this for 20 years, guys. I'm pretty old, right? And when I started, it was all about keyword density and keyword stuffing. So if it was small business loan, I would say small business loan all over my page and the title and the headline. And I would repeat it a million times and it would rank really well. That does not work anymore. You'll actually uh, either get penalized or ignored when you're doing that because Google is really smart. They unbelievable army of PhDs that are looking at search quality and search spam, which is basically content that exists just to manipulate or or, or rank in the search engines. And they're super smart. And that stuff just doesn't work. You need to develop content that, again, is a value, content that has a little weight to it in the number of of words, content that you know contextually and thematically makes sense. So it needs to be on topic within your niche market. So the stuff that worked, you know, a decade ago or even like 20 years ago, considering how old I am, just does not work today. You actually need content that makes sense, that's of value to the user. Google also looks at bounce rates. So when I'm on Google, this is obviously a pretty big benefit for this site because I've been sitting on this page for, for a long time. But if we go here, we click and then I press back, right? That's a very high bounce rate to Google. So they start to look at that and they realize that the users that they're that are being directed, you know, from Google to that page and the search and res- search engine results, they're not seeing value in that content. They're bouncing back. They're clicking the back button very quickly. And guess what? Google's super smart. They have access to analytics, you know, when you're using Google Analytics to think about, but they can just see how quickly, you know, and when I say access, what I mean like in the aggregate, it's not like they're looking at specific analytics. You know, I want to, you know, kind of clarify that. But, you know, they start to understand kind of the value of content that you're providing. And a big way they look at it is the bounce rate. So how quick and how often your prospects and consumers press that back button right? It's just really important to, to think about. The longer that they maintain on your site, the more value that you're showing Google that you're providing. And over time, that's going to be great for your consumers and also great for your search engine ranking. So again, with the goal of trying to get um, you know, free traffic, which is the, uh, which is the key. Um, all right, let's see here. I'm just looking at Questions. Okay, good. So I think everyone's on the same page. We will look at the next niche market that members are typing in in a moment. So let's talk a little bit more and continue from last week on on how we develop content. So we looked at 
uh, developing a blog on, on WordPress. We did talk about that in part one of content marketing. So let's, if we type in site wordpress.com, this is going to return pages for bad credit business loans on that are hosted on, on wordpress.com, right? So we can start to see here. So what I do suggest is that you use WordPress. If you have not set up a blog or a site for yourself today, then I do suggest that you start work with WordPress. It's just a, it's a great CMS content management system, blogging platform, and, and just the fastest way to get your content online, which is really key. So start to take a look at the content that's being developed here. So this is interesting. So someone's taking a question and then answering the question. Interesting. In finance, forbearance agreement. So interesting, they're kind of writing these long form questions. I want to see if this is scraped. So the way to test that, to copy it, go to Google. So any duplicate content or content that you're scraping, you should you should not even bother publishing it because Google will penalize the duplicate content and it just makes your site um, look like a thin, junky affiliate site, right? It's not the way that we want to set off here. So um, yeah, so it looks like this is duplicate content on, maybe it's just this one site, John Skelton. Uh, no, that's okay. So this is actually interesting. So this is actually um, content that's just appearing in the sidebar. So that's okay. So interesting the way that they're asking, you know, asking and then answering it. All right, so this is not duplicate content. So that's, uh, that's good. So to me, and we talked about this on, you know, the first content marketing webinar before, I think that WordPress is just a wonderful way for you to start to publish your content for free. You could set it up on one of their subdomains as you see here. And then I do suggest that you develop your own domain and, you know, you could start to, to host and, and, you know, have a, a small paid uh, account um, in, in using WordPress also. So again, there's a lot of advantages for having your own domain and some you know paid versions of a, a content management system. But you could always start off you know, for free, right? And that's a, a very important kind of strong thing to to consider. Um, okay, good. Let's take a look here. Let me see how many let's see if there's any more questions about WordPress. Good. A lot of people are saying WordPress. Um, so Sydney, so yes, you'd place an advertisement for your CPA offers after you've been approved by the networks and those specific offers with an offer vault. You'd either place a banner creative that the network would provide you or text link with your affiliate link. So yes, that's how we'd monetize you know, the, the content um, is, is that way. You could also use things like AdSense. So we can see that you know, the site here is advertising with, with Google AdSense. Hang on, give my computer a second. So again, you can run AdSense ads, you can run banner display advertising. Typically, I like to run affiliate offers, CPA offers, because I find that that um, builds the highest lifetime value for, for my customers. But um, you definitely also think about supplementing revenue by running you know, AdSense or, or you know, sort of another monetization network too. Um, so great question. Let me see other questions here. Um, Juan's, Juan's asking the best theme for WordPress. You know, I don't worry about it at the first stage. It's more important to get your content out there and to start publishing it than it is to find the best theme and the best header graphic and, you know, uh, to spell, ch I mean, you want to spell check things. So, you know, to, to proofread everything, you know, 10 times and sort of analysis paralysis. The most important thing to do is to launch, to get content out there. Because that's the, that's, you know, that's the key. That's how you start getting attention from Google and the search engines with the start of your content marketing. And then, you know, starting to, to, to focus attention on, 
you know, uh, bringing the search engines back to your site on a regular basis by having a consistent frequency of publishing, which we're going to talk about in a second. That's really what your keys are. Don't worry about the perfect theme. Just pick whatever free theme there is in, in WordPress, and it is good enough. And don't worry about your header graphics or your banners. Nothing has to be perfect. You know what it has to be? It has to be live. That's what it's all about. So many new affiliates I see stuck because they spend all the time trying to get their header exactly right and every pixel lined up and the best theme on WordPress. None of that matters. What matters is getting content out there um, as fast as you can of a good enough quality. What I mean by that is the content doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a Polar Prize winning piece. This is you know marketing content, content marketing, you know, to be able to, you know, to drive users and build organic traffic to your site, build a relationship with your site. You know, have good content where you provide value and also where you know you know you're not having these high bounce rates where you know Google's looking and saying no one's interested in, in this site. And also you'll find that when you have um, you know better um, content, uh, you will, you know, find a better relationship with your users and you'll see a higher lifetime value. It'll be easier to monetize it. And exactly what Juan is saying, take action. That's, you know, my mantra It's just take action every day, take massive action. The way to win in affiliate marketing is just to take action, right? You just, if you're just sitting there watching the webinars, that's great. We, we'd love to give you this training, but that's not what it's about. You have to apply and get accepted to affiliate networks. You have to take the offers. You have to run some of the paid ads like we were talking about. And we did a whole free traffic series in the past uh, recently. But also for this free content marketing, you have to publish, right? So that's really the, the key here and, and, the, and the steps. So having your own blog is critical, right? It's just the easiest way to have a voice online. So I mentioned before sort of frequency um, of distribution of content and publishing of content, super important. You need to train the search engine spiders, search engine robots, bots, right? That you are publishing content on a regular basis. So if you publish an article once a month, search engines are not super excited to come back to your site. If you're publishing multiple articles a day, if you're publishing an article once a day or every two days, whatever it is, set a consistent schedule and stick to it. Because what you want to do is you want to convince the search engines to come back to your site on a really regular basis. And the way to do that is by publishing content frequently. That's what this is all about. So the more and the more frequent content that you publish, the more success you can start to scale to. Super important. Too many times I see your affiliates, you know, they'll they'll put up one or two articles and they let, you know, their blog or their site just kind of lie there and they wonder why it's not working and not scaling. That's the reason why you have to show it a little love. You have to put some time into it and it doesn't have to be hard work. You don't have to put it, you know, you know, you don't have to stay up all night doing it again. It's just all about publishing content that what I like to call is good enough. That is, you know, um, you know, five, six paragraphs, kind of minimum, not duplicate content, some value to your readers, like, you know, show some value to the search engines. That's what this is all about. And doing that went, you know, rinse, you know, wash, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, whatever, whatever it says on the, uh, on the shampoo, rinse, wash, repeat, I think. Um, uh, so that, that's what it is. Whatever it says on the shampoo, you need to do that. You need to do this consistently every day or multiple times a day. And it takes some time, especially for new content on a new site and a new um, blog, to get the attentions from the search engine, attention from the search engine, and start to ranking for it. You know, this doesn't happen overnight with organic traffic. When it comes to paid advertising, it's overnight or it's the same day. You launch a campaign and you start seeing traffic. Building organic traffic with content marketing, as we're talking about tonight and, and the previous webinar that, that we recorded for you, right, is that is different. That's all about taking you know, consistent time and building your site into being an authority in the niche market. And that can take time of publishing. But again, it has the benefit of one, building free, consistent traffic. And number two, I've always found in my experience <clears throat> is that traffic will convert the best. It monetizes the best because it's search intent driven. So super, super important to, to consider that also. So the frequency that you're publishing right, is so, so important. So that's really, you know, kind of the main homework for, 
for tonight. And I'm going to, you know, give you another tip on, on, you know, getting your content kind of just, dis- you know, just, you know, distributed. And then we're going to talk more about content uh, marketing. We're going to do actually part three of content marketing uh, because, you know, there's just so many questions. It's just so important to build your organic uh, traffic and search engine, you know, driven traffic. I think it's kind of worthy of it, it you know, another session um, specifically. Uh, covering this time. So, you know, I think um, one other tip that I wanted to leave you with um, for this session is that now that we've started to to see, you know, blogs that are, are publishing the, this content, one of the, the key items that you can build distribution and build authority for your site and also backlinks for your site, which we'll talk about in a moment, is through the concept of, of guest authors or guest blogging. So what that means is if we find you know a, a blog like this and you know to be able to submit an article that sometimes you're going to want to see original content that you haven't published before. Sometimes they'll be very happy to take an article that you've already published on your blog. And one of the key advantages is that you have the opportunity to and the ability to link back to your own blog or your own website, and you're driving users from this other site directly to you through those. But you're also very importantly is you're building backlinks to your site. You're building links to your site, which again just builds and reinforces the in addition to all the content that you're publishing to start to develop organic rankings and over time, right? So just publishing a, a blog and not having anyone link to it be very, very hard for you to rank in, in Google's world. It's sort of this tandem effort where we need to build backlinks for our content all the while while we're publishing content. Really, really important. So now that we're looking at these sites on, on WordPress, what we're going to do is let's take a look at here. Let's say veteran. So it is you know, happy Veterans Day for everyone this week. Any, any of our uh, military, thank you for your service. So let's talk about you know supporting veteran small business loans, right? So one of the things that we can do is we can type in blog. So you could do it on the WordPress site. We did site colon WordPress. We can also start typing in blog here. And we can see all of these domains. So I'm looking at ones that, that have blogs. So again, doing this research and, and writing this all down in your Google Doc and your Google Sheet is really, really important too. So that way we can track it over time and see what you know these companies are, are, are writing about, marketing, how they're monetizing their traffic, but also um, very important to also start to, to try to submit articles that you've written um, as guest content. So we look at you know a site like NerdWallet. This is a pretty big authority. I'm, I'm familiar with, with this site. So you know my gut says some of the larger sites – Unless you're you're con- unless you're seen as sort of an influencer or kind of guru in that market, things would be harder to get some of, you know, of these bigger sites to publish your content to to start. So I'd probably start with some smaller, mid-sized sites. Let's take a look here. Len Genius, genius here. So let's see here. Let's see Eric's work. As a freelance journalist, 29 posts. So what I would do is I would start you know, developing in my Google Sheet or Google Doc a list of blogs and, and sites that are publishing content, and I would start to contact them. And in the contact, I would introduce yourself, give them a little information about your site, and you should say that – you know, uh, you've been writing original content and, and you'd love to have a guest article on their blog. And what you're going to find is that you need to put a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of leads out there for, for this. So it's not just about, you know, contacting five blogs and then forgetting about, about it is you need to put this in, in 
your kind of action folder for every single day where you're identifying maybe 10, maybe 20 blogs each day and contacting them. And the goal is over time to be able to, to receive you know, feedback from as many of them as you can. And again, you're not going to, to, to receive replies from everyone and that's perfectly okay. You're not going to have everyone agree to publish your content and that's perfectly, perfectly okay. That's why it's so important to be able to, to not just you know, submit to one blog or not just one write, art, write one article. It's all about focus. It's all about attention. It's all about persistence, right? So, and taking action, of course. So the more time that we spend on following up with these different blogs and having like an active list and, and contacting them, the better your chances are. And it takes some time, especially if you haven't been published before. It just takes time because the, you know, the blogs and, and the other sites are, you know, are lending some of their authority to you and, you know, they want to make sure that, you know, that you're going to write something that that's quality, that's going to be a value for, you know, their, their, um, their audience. And this leads me to, you know, my final point tonight. And again, we'll do part three of, of content marketing. So we'll talk about article distribution. We'll talk a little bit more about guest authors. We're going to talk about you know press releases and, and securing you know, additional backlinks for organic ranking. So we're going to make that kind of part three about content marketing. But I think yeah, I'd like to leave you, you with tonight is, is just a thought. So what I described now is not hard work, right? But it's a, some consistent effort. So I want you to ask yourself, can you do this in five niche markets? If you're just working by yourself, if you don't have partners or if you don't have an outsourced team, you know, can you do this in five markets? And the answer is no. You can't write content and secure distribution for your articles and you know, uh, you know, write guest blog posts and do press releases and all the things we're going to talk about on, on our next session in multiple markets. It's just too hard for one person to do. So this leads to, to my, my focus part of this session is that one of the things that I would suggest, and again, we've spent a lot of time in previous webinars talking about the foundation, you know, talking about, um, you know, talking about the importance of, um, of competitive research and, and market intelligence and keeping notes and, and track of everything. But with that is you want to do your research in, into your market, right? Take your notes, but then you need to pick one market and focus on it. And over time, you can think about expanding to other markets. But I'd say that the easiest way to fail or not succeed is one, you know, by not taking action. Number two is just being by distra being distracted and trying to run in five or 10 different markets at, at once. It's just too hard. So my sort of key piece of advice, you know, for the end of tonight is pick one niche market, stay focused on it. It's just super, super important. So that's something that, um, you know, that I just kind of wanted to, to leave you with um, this evening. So awesome. Thanks again, everyone. It was great to have you here. Hope you enjoyed the session. Please do watch all of the, the replays. And um, any questions, uh, you can, of course, email support. Or more importantly, show up on a live webinar. We'd love to see you on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great evening. And take massive action. And make sure, again, that you guys are signing up for 10 affiliate networks every week from OfferVault. And pick a niche market. Start to get your, you know, start to, to to set up your WordPress blog and publish content consistently. And that's how you can start to build organic traffic. Thanks, everyone. This is Howie Schwartz for Offer Vault. Have a great day.